All right, guys, we have some pretty hefty plans for some snowblower testing this winter, and today we are going to unbox snowblower number one of that group. This guy got shipped to us, and it's pretty hefty. That went pretty well. We are going to put this guy together. Stick with us. For a self-propelled gas two-stage snowblower, this dude is huge. Look at that throat. The amount of snow that you could suck into this thing is just, it's awesome. Putting this together is going to be very simple. I just wanted to give you a look at what it came like in the package, in the crate. It was pretty simple to move around. It is fairly heavy, so obviously a few people are gonna be needed, or a tractor with forks helps to get it off the semi that it was delivered on. But it's packaged super well. You can see inside here all the wood structures that go around everything. Let's get to taking some of this apart and seeing what this guy looks like put together. I'm a little surprised that this isn't physically strapped down on here. Uh, it definitely is packaged well. We're just going to take off all the little parts and pieces that are zip tied onto this guy so we can move these handlebars. That can stay. Big zip tie. Look at that guy. So there are little cables underneath here and a lot of handles. So just watch what's happening. We had one bolt fall from shipping and it was buried up in there, so that's a good thing. Just a simple carriage bolt with a nylock shoulder bolt. Obviously be gentle if you're using an impact to put some things together. And the reason I am is because of these carriage bolts. There's really nothing to hang on to in the other end and the impact makes them going pretty easy. You can see we're just on level one on this little guy. There's a lot happening underneath here while you're trying to lift this up. So you want to make sure that these safety cables are on the roller. There is one on each side. The other side is tucked up there a little bit more. And you just want to be careful because things are going to be hanging out. You don't want to bend or break anything. But at the same time, it's very simple and there's really not much to look out for. The chute assembly should also be pretty easy. We just have to remove these two bolts from the top. Remember not to fight this. It does have some cables attached and those cables are connected up front so you're not going to move some things easily. Slide that guy into place, line up your bolts and you are done. At this point the only thing that should really work is your chute going up and down via this lever. We're going to take the other guide and put it in this hex hole down here where there's a crank and then connect it up to the top with this pin. There's two holes here. You can pick the one that fits best 
for your machine in how much slack you need and reinsert the pin. At that point, your crank should work to move your chute and you should be able to go up and down. We're at one of the final steps here. Take your speed lever, push it all the way forward. This guy that's hanging is going to slide up into that hole. Just jimmy that around. And then you put your pin in and from there, you have your reverse and forward speeds all set up. The last thing we're gonna do is take our shear pins, put them in the holders. There's one on each side. And then slide these pins through. In that case, if we ever need them, they'll be right here and ready to go and we won't have a stop of usage. We're at the point where we can add some fuel. I noticed this engine was run prior because there is a little bit of fuel left in the tank. We want to check the oil and since this is sitting on a slight angle, I just want to make sure it's in the safe marks and this one is at this point in time. I don't want to add oil because we're not completely level. From here, there's a key. You push the key in, that's run, pull the key out, that is stop. So we're gonna push this in. Your throttle control is down here. We're gonna make sure we're somewhere in the middle. We'll prime this guy a little bit. And then on top is our choke. There is an electric start on this, but I'm not gonna use it just to start it the first time. I wanna see how this goes. We'll choke it. Check that out. With this guy running, I wanted to take it outside and just see how the cable adjustments were. This left handle here is the auger control. When you pull this down, it will start the front auger and your right side is going to control the speed forward. Now, once you pull the right side down, this auger control will stay locked down if you had it down first or if it comes down second, it'll click into place. You have your heated hand grips on and off here. This is your chute up and down. And then you have your speed, one through six and back. Now with this handle down, it's not gonna move easily. And then from there you have little levers underneath that are for turning. Now even if you're moving this guy around and you don't have the engine started, it's gonna have the differential locked. You're gonna to wanna to push these levers to unlock everything so you can move this around easily, even just you know around your garage. So if you're moving around the garage, you can see it's stuck. It'll go forward and back easily, but if I push one lever, it'll unlock everything and I can move it. The front of this 2X30 Cub Cadet is absolutely a beast. I mean, you're talking about a lot of snow intake here. This guy's rated for 18 to 23 inches of snow. It looks like it will take it. Cub Cadet rates it for an eight to 15 car driveway. That's huge for something like this, but this thing is built well. You do have a tool here just in case you get into some slush and this packs itself up. You never want to put your hands in there, obviously, no matter what's happening. And always shut the machine off if you get into that position. Everything else here is really straightforward. Great time again to check the oil. Make sure that you're in that safe line with it completely level. And you should be set. It takes 5W30. This is a great unit, but we need to get some snow or get on an ice rink, get somewhere and test this guy out. Now is the time to start looking at snow blowers, obviously before the snow falls. A couple things that stand out to me here is the large amount of snow that this unit will take in the front. You also have a 357 cc engine that you can pull start and it pull started pretty easy considering that was its first real start out in the wild but it also has an electric start where you just plug in a cord and you can push a button. You still have to use the choke and everything else, but really it starts easy. You have some good LED lights on here that are gonna come on anytime that you have the engine running. Not only is that nice if you're out during the day, 
helps people see you, but it really works well at night since the winter hours really cut our daylight down. Other than that, this is easy to maintain. We're gonna continue to come back to this guy. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel, give us a like in this video and leave some comments. I'll try to answer any questions that you have about not only this blower, but the other blowers that we're gonna be looking at and trying to get you some information before the snow falls. So as always, we appreciate your time. Have a great day.